a short film on how to set up subcut fluids. If you require further information, please look at the Clinical Skills Net or the uh, policy on the internet. So subcut fluids are as effective as IV fluids for mild to moderate dehydration, and it's often seen in the end of life patients. Due to poor blood supply to the subcut fluids, uh, they are absorbed slowly, so the policy does suggest that there is a one litre maximum administration over 24 hours. The advantages of subcut fluids are that they're straightforward, there's few side effects, it's inexpensive, it's less likely to cause, cause fluid overload and it's less painful for the patient. It's not suitable for rapid administration of fluids. For patients with clotting disorders, fluid overload, patients requiring uh, precise fluid balance, or those patients requiring renal dialysis. Patients displaying signs of uh, dehydration, such as dry mouth, apathy, headache, or dysphagia, these patients are the patients we should be considering for subcut fluids, and it must be discussed with the GP, the consultant, or the palliative care nurse. The risks of subcut fluids are that there could be localised pooling around where you've um, put in the needle for the subcut fluids, uh, there could be leakage at the site, there could be localised pain for the patient, uh, there could be poor absorption of the fluids, uh, and uh, there could be bruising or infection around the site of administration. For patients requiring the subcut fluids, we would need to do a risk assessment. We need to risk assess their environment that we are, are giving the subcut fluids. We would need to risk assess uh, the patient's mental capacity and we would need to risk assess whether there is any care support in between the nursing visits in the community. So before performing the procedure, we will need to check uh, the patient's identity against the prescription that we have. In the community, we would use either a community prescription chart or an end of life drug chart. In this hospital, please check the patient's identity against your fluid prescription. Um, we would be looking for three points of patient identity against the drug chart. We'd also be looking to get consent from the patient um, and this would also need to be documented. So before we perform the procedure, we need to get all of our equipment. We would need um, a sterile dressing pack, a fluid giving set, fluids which have been prescribed, subcutaneous needle, a clear dressing, and an alcohol swab for the skin. So if we don't put my hands on. This is a sterile non-touch technique, so we need to make sure to keep our sterile field sterile. <laughs> On all of the equipment, we need to make sure that uh, the equipment is in date. And also need to make sure that our fluid is in date and we have the correct volume. Once we have all our equipment ready, um, we would need to talk the patient through the procedure as we are doing it. So to begin with, we need to discuss with the patient where we think there would be an appropriate site to insert the needle. Um, we would be looking at uh, the upper arms, thighs, uh, or the abdomen as the main sites. Um, obviously, depending on where your patient has the most subcutaneous fluid and where it would be most comfortable for them. Okay, so we'll check our fluids, making sure uh, that it is in date and it is the correct fluid that we are giving. 
taking off the bun and the little cap. So they're getting set as far as it will go into the clip. Closing off the, um, the roller ball, we just squeeze the fluid into the chamber and run the fluids through to the end of the giving set. We're now all ready to, um, to insert the needle into the patient. First off, we'll clean the site with an alcohol swab. Leaving that to dry. So with the needle, you need to make sure that the bobbly side is towards the patient's skin and that uh, when we enter the patient's skin, we are going at a 45 degree angle with the bevel up. We're going to pinch the, pinch the patient's skin. We're holding the yellow tabs. And we'll pull the end, which removes the needle leaving a needle-free device in the patient. Now popping that in the shark's bin. From here, we can apply the dressing. Making sure the area is now secure. So you attach the fluid to the drip, uh, to the drip stand, using a no-touch technique. Take the bung off and attach the fluids. Now we need to work out the drip rate. Um, at the back of the policy, there the drip rates are all worked out for you. Um, so if we were doing a, a litre over 24 hours, uh, the drip rate would be 14 drips per minute. So we open up the fluids and watch the drips and calculate the drips. After we've set up the fluids, we would want to come back and check the sites after 15 minutes. And then after that, making sure it's okay, every eight hours, looking for uh, irritation, redness at the site, tenderness, swelling, or inflammation um, in the patient's home uh, we would, the district nurse would be required to call the patient to check that everything was okay and have a discussion. After we need to monitor the fluids balance, um, the GP or the doctor may require bloods to be taken on an alternate day basis looking at their use and ease. Um, however, not all patients will require this due to their condition and that is a discussion to have with the GP. After setting up the subcut fluids, we would move on to documentation. So uh, we would need to document the site and location, including dating on the dressing uh, when it has been inserted. We would need to document the flow and the rate of the infusion, the start time, the fluid prescribed, including signing the drop chart, document any, com uh, sorry, document any complications and onward communications with the professional team. There is full guidance for setting up subcut fluids on the internet and on the clinical skills net.